Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Commissioned in 2017, HMS Queen Elizabeth stands as the Royal Navy's largest and most technologically advanced warship, embodying a new era of British maritime power. Measuring 284 meters in length and displacing around 65,000 tons, she serves as the fleet's flagship and a visible symbol of the United Kingdom's global reach. Designed to support a wide range of operations, from high-intensity combat to disaster relief and humanitarian assistance, the carrier can deploy up to 40 aircraft, including F-35B Lightning II stealth fighters. Merlin helicopters, and other support assets. Equipped with twin islands, one dedicated to ship control, and the other to air operations, HMS Queen Elizabeth features cutting-edge radar systems, advanced communication networks, and an integrated electric propulsion system that enhances efficiency and endurance. Her vast flight deck and ski jump ramp enable short takeoff and vertical landing operations, ensuring rapid deployment of aircraft in any environment. As the centerpiece of the UK's carrier strike group, HMS Queen Elizabeth operates alongside destroyers, frigates, submarines, and support vessels, creating a powerful, self-sustaining naval task force. Together, they project deterrence, conduct international exercises, and strengthen alliances, reaffirming Britain's enduring commitment to maritime security and freedom of navigation across the world's oceans. Led by HMS Queen Elizabeth, the UK Carrier Strike Group serves as the centerpiece of Britain's maritime power and a cornerstone of its ability to operate globally. At its heart is the Royal Navy's flagship aircraft carrier, capable of launching and recovering F-35B Lightning II stealth fighters and Merlin helicopters for a wide range of missions. Supporting the carrier are Type 45 destroyers, responsible for providing air and missile defense, and Type 23 frigates equipped for anti-submarine warfare. Royal Fleet Auxiliary vessels, including tankers and supply ships, ensure the group can remain at sea for extended periods by delivering fuel, munitions, and essential supplies. An astute class nuclear-powered submarine operates silently below the surface, offering intelligence gathering, reconnaissance, and strike capability. Together, these elements form a cohesive, multi-domain task force designed to project British influence, strengthen international partnerships, and safeguard the world's vital sea lanes through power, precision, and coordination. In a significant achievement for the Royal Navy, HMS Queen Elizabeth has successfully conducted her first replenishment at sea operation in the cold waters of the North Atlantic. While maintaining steady course and speed, Alongside the Royal Fleet Auxiliary Tanker RFA Tidespring, the carrier received thousands of gallons of aviation fuel, often referred to as amber gold. This complex procedure, carried out amid shifting seas and winds, 
showcase the crew's exceptional seamanship and coordination. The milestone marks a vital step in sustaining the UK's carrier strike group during long-range deployments, ensuring continuous power projection and global operational readiness. Everything changed drastically for the Cavour when it was certified to carry and operate the fifth-generation F-35B Lightning II stealth multi-role fighter. The Cavour is certified as of April 2021 to carry 10 F-35Bs inside its hangar and six more on deck for a total of 16. Not only are these aircraft better than the Harrier in almost every area, but they are also stealth aircraft, carrying their missiles and joint direct attack munitions, JDAMs, inside weapon bays in their fuselage. Once the Lightning IIs became available, the profile of the Cavour was changed to that of an aircraft carrier with limited to more significant air power. Cross-deck operations involve moving and using aircraft from one naval ship to another, improving their ability to work together and communicate. For example, Marine Fighter Attack Squadrons of the Royal Air Force and the Italian Air Force and Navy work together on missions inside the Mediterranean. On this occasion, the ships in question were HMS Queen Elizabeth and ITS Cavour. By letting planes land, refuel, or take off from Allied ships, this practice increases tactical flexibility and makes Allies stronger. Cross-deck operations help navies prepare for joint missions, share operational techniques, and show unity. On the flight deck of the Queen Elizabeth, the aircraft are controlled from the aft island, which acts as the air traffic control tower, or pry fly. Aircraft are controlled by flight deck control personnel using a combination of hand signals and radio communications. These personnel coordinate landings and launches in conjunction with the aft island. When an F-35B is ready for takeoff, the pilot is given the takeoff signal and uses their own power to increase speed and takeoff from the flight deck using the ski ramp. After missions, the aircraft lands vertically or with slight forward momentum, which is called the shipborne rolling vertical landing technique. In the US Navy, there are two types of aircraft carriers. Older Nimitz class carriers are still among the most powerful in the world but the new Gerald R. Ford class is set to be the undisputed king of the seas. Both classes displace at least 100,000 tons. The Nimitz class carries 90 aircraft. 
while the Gerald R. Ford class has scaled down to just over 75 aircraft. These supercarriers are nuclear powered and can remain at sea for years if they are regularly resupplied. There are 10 active Nimitz-class carriers and one Gerald R. Ford-class serving around the globe. As the next carriers, John F. Kennedy and Enterprise, become operational, they will either supplement or replace Nimitz-class carriers. U.S. Navy aircraft carriers utilize a unique arrested landing and catapult takeoff mechanism called CATO-BAR, Catapult Assisted Takeoff Barrier Arrested Recovery. This system utilizes steam to launch aircraft from the carriers utilizing four steam catapults. On the Gerald R. Ford class, Steam is being replaced by EMALS, Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. EMALS utilizes electromagnetism in the same way as railguns, but with a much lower and controlled power output. Both classes utilize arresting wires to capture landing aircraft, although the system on the Gerald R. Ford is more advanced, with three instead of four arresting wires. The Advanced Arresting Gear, AAG, system utilizes a more advanced hydraulic system, which would place less strain on unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, such as collaborative combat systems, CCSs. When the carriers of the world are compared, the only one that comes close to those of the U.S. Navy is the French F.S. Charles de Gaulle. This carrier also uses the Cato Bar system. Charles de Gaulle displaces less than half the water than Nimitz-class carriers and has a length of 860 feet, compared to the 1,092 feet of the Nimitz-class. Charles de Gaulle also carries fewer aircraft than the Nimitz-class, most notably the Rafale M being their main fighter aircraft. With their Katobar systems, nuclear power, and other similarities, the U.S. and France have the most unique carriers in the world. Because of their closeness in terms of design, French Rafale M fighters regularly conduct training missions from U.S. Navy vessels. Since six NATO countries operate aircraft carriers, their combined power is formidable. The Charles de Gaulle, the USS Harry S. Truman, CVN-75, and the ITS Cavour together can make up a powerful naval force. They have advanced fighter jets like Rafales, Super Hornets, and F-35Bs that give them air control, allow them to launch precise attacks, and perform reconnaissance over large areas. These carriers provide strong maritime security by allowing troops and equipment to be sent to different areas quickly. As a group, in tri-carrier operations, they show how multinational cooperation can work by completing tasks together, preventing threats, and protecting strategic interests. 
This helps keep the peace and maintain stability in tough geopolitical situations. Exercise Chesapeake was an integration exercise. It was the first time 350 airmen from the French Embarked Air Group, GAA, and the aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle worked with the U.S. Navy in the United States. The deployment took place in honor of the historical battle. This operation was named Chesapeake, and its goal was to ensure that French pilots on U.S. carriers had the latest landing skills. French pilots did carrier landings and takeoffs as part of active integration into U.S. naval activities. This helped them improve their skills and make sure they could work with Allied naval forces. Aircraft carriers are invariably the flagships of the world's navies because of their power, from the Italian Cavour to the British HMS Queen Elizabeth, with their ski ramps to the Cato Bar-enabled U.S. and French Navy carriers. Aircraft carriers remain the most potent forces at sea. In an age defined by advanced technology and global cooperation, aircraft carriers remain the ultimate symbol of naval power and strategic reach. From HMS Queen Elizabeth's state-of-the-art design and cross-deck operations with allies, to the Italian Cavour's transformation for F-35B operations, and the United States nuclear-powered supercarriers, each vessel represents national ambition and maritime mastery. Exercises like Chesapeake and tri-carrier operations among NATO allies highlight a growing spirit of collaboration, ensuring seamless coordination in complex missions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.